CataractCoach.com. Limited anterior vitrectomy for floaters. Is this a viable option compared to doing a full pars plan of vitrectomy? Comment below. Okay, here we are now making our paracentesis with our 1.0 keratome blade here. And we're going to put an AC maintainer. I think this is a really ergonomic, easy to insert AC maintainer. I'm just going to take some tape and tape that tubing so that way it stays nice and stable there. So now we have the AC maintainer in there, keeping a nice formed eye. I'm going to then measure about three and a half millimeters behind the limit. So I'm taking my calipers, just making sure I'm about three and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and measure anywhere that's convenient for your hand position. So this is the left eye. I'm kind of superior temporal here, measuring about three and a half millimeters. I'm going to take the, this is the one step 27 gauge needle with that vitrector. You can see the bevel, bevel up. I'm just going to enter with conviction. You see a little resistance until the patient has some resistance, but that's it. Aiming more towards the middle of the eye and then angling up so I'm underneath the lens now. And so here I'm in the middle of the eye where I can see my tip of that vitrector and I'm using very, very low vacuum. We're talking 40, 60, 80 or so of vacuum. We're not doing very high amounts. And the reason, the, the idea behind this is if we're using low vacuum amounts, we're only removing whatever's liquefied. We're not trying to pull and tug. The vitreous skirt that's attached to the retina, we're trying to leave alone. So we're doing basically like a core vitrectomy here and only removing the amount of vitreous that's liquefied. You can see pieces come to you with a very low vacuum. It's a dual blade cutter. So depending on your FACO machine, anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 cuts per minute. And we're staying in the middle of the eye here. And as you see, I'm not moving it around. I'm not swirling around. I'm just staying in the middle, letting things come to me. So having potentially less traction on the retina. Now, very important, after each case, I'm examining with an indirect 360 degrees, trying to get a good understanding of the uh, retina, making sure there's no tears as well. Uh, it's important to, in, to, in, to inspect right after the case, the next day and one week to look for tears. We haven't seen it, but that's important. Now I'm going a little bit more posteriorly here towards the middle there. Again, holding it steady, not pulling and tugging, not moving it around. And then you can see here now, as I just fast forward, going all the way down to the middle here, and it's still, we're not long enough. This tip of this, this needle is not long enough to go and hit the other side of the, of the wall or hit the posterior pole. It's too short. And therefore, we're really staying in the middle of the vitreous here again, not moving around. And so now that I felt like I've seen all the floaters I can see that are gone, it looks pretty clear. The media looks very clear. I feel pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead now, just kind of come up anteriorly just for a few more seconds here. Just kind of cut, 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 make sure nothing is attached to the tip there. And once I feel I'm attached to the tip, then I'm going to come out. And there you go. We'll take, kind of bring the infusion down. And I'm just going to go ahead. We'll take out the uh, AC maintainer, making sure there's no leak here, which is good. Again, these, these are small 27 gauge need can uh, needles, so they don't leak. And I'm just going to basically hydrate the anterior chamber, uh, hydrate the wound rather, fill up the anterior chamber with some BSS on a stick. And that is it. Patient did great. Hope that helped everybody. Thank you so much. And by the way, we took this patient right afterwards to look at the retina to make sure there's no tears as well. Thank you so much. Okay, here we are inserting our AC maintainer. Uh, again, using some irrigation to keep the chamber nice and formed. Measuring about three and a half millimeters behind the limbus. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark where we're going to enter with our one-step vitrector needle. And it's going to show you here the needle real quick. It's a 27 gauge needle. There's a bevel. You can see the bevel up fashion there. Just to show you kind of how we want to enter into the eye. I'm going to enter perpendicular to the square towards the posterior pole. Enter with conviction. There you're going to see a little bit of resistance is normal, but you see how it enters pretty nicely. And we go right behind the lens, maybe a few millimeters behind the lens. You can see in the anterior middle vitreous, all those opacity. And when I start to turn the uh, vitrector on and press the pedal, you're going to see all these particles just come towards the tip. I actually keep the vacuum low, around 150 or so, less than 200. You don't need a lot of vacuum, I've realized, because these are all liquefied vitreous opacity. So they're going to come to the tip with very little vacuum. And I think using less vacuum, again, just has causes less of the attached vitreous from the retina to want to come towards the tip. So you're staying here without moving the tip, letting things come to you. Again, it's, it's cutting about 5,000 cuts per minute or so. And so we're going to go ahead and cut and remove vitreous here. But you can see how nicely those particles, those opacities come towards the tip here. So I start really kind of behind the lens and slowly marched posteriorly. But again, not sweeping, not moving, keeping as steady as possible, letting it cut first. Therefore, technically, we're putting less traction onto the vitreous or to the retina from the per peripheral vitreous as well. So I'm just going to go a little deeper now, kind of stay there for, for maybe 30 seconds or so. Again, trying to keep with minimal movement as possible so we're not pulling on any vitreous as much as possible as well. Again here, now I'm uh, all the way in, you can see I'm all the way in. And again, this needle is safe in the sense that you, no matter how far you deep you go, you cannot hit the retina. So I'm as far deep as I can go, staying nice and stable. 
Now, now I'm ready to come out here. It's going to go ahead and decrease the infusion, and I'm going to come straight out, and there you go. Taking my wax cell just to kind of push on that wound area, you can see here how it seals nicely. And again, I turn my infusion down uh, to about 30, and now I turn it off. And I'm just going to go ahead and hydrate the wounds here in a second. And then I close that, close the wound, and that's pretty much it. So pretty straightforward, efficient surgery. I think minimally invasive. These patients are extremely happy right away, and even the next day. I do check the retina right away immediately after surgery, post-up day one, one week and one month. Hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching.